Victoria's high country is home to some terrific trout fisheries in both lakes and rivers. They're valued by anglers, by government and the regional communities which enjoy and depend on them for trade and relaxation. Recently anglers have told us that high country trout rivers are struggling. Trout numbers are down and their fishing experience has declined. We've heard this message loud and clear and to do something about it, we've recently secured nearly $900,000 of funding from fishing licence fees and the state government. We've called it the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program and it consists of eight projects over the next three years. The first project investigates whether summer temperatures are adversely impacting trout populations. Because trout are from the northern hemisphere, they have a preferred range of cooler water temperatures. And we know that at times, Victorian river temperatures exceed thresholds at which trout feed, grow and survive. In this project, Arthur Ryler Institute researchers will track brown trout in the Dalatite River to see how they respond to fluctuations in water temperature. When water temperatures increase, do trout move? And if so, at what temperatures do they move and where do they go? The answers will help us understand how summer water temperatures might impact the fishery and enable fishers to adapt. For example, fishers may need to change their fishing locations or methods to adapt to the changing behaviour of trout. The second project investigates the health of wild trout populations in our rivers. Most high country rivers contain self-sustaining populations of trout which breed during winter of each year. These rivers do not require stocking because generally speaking, wild breeding creates the next generation of trout and help from a hatchery is not required. This project will gauge the strength of annual breeding by these wild river fish, which is an indicator of adult trout numbers in future years. 12 high profile rivers in Victoria will be surveyed at three or four sites each year to provide a report card of trout population health. The initial list of priority wild trout waters include Hauka River, Dalatite, Kiwa, King, Upper Yarra, Ovens, Upper Goulburn, Eyre, Dargo, Jamison, Tarongo, Upper Mitter and Nariel Creek. This project will also consider whether predation and competition from other species is affecting trout populations in our rivers. Carp is one such species, so during survey work across the 12 priority rivers, scientists will record information about carp, including their size and abundance, along with other possible predators of trout, such as cormorants. This project's about looking for patterns that correlate to trout abundance and condition. Whether you run a business or a farm, or you're trying to manage an ecosystem, you need to know what's going on before you can manage it properly. Um, and that's why I'm just delighted with this wild trout program because it's extensive. There are 12 different streams being studied. It's going to run for three years and it's going to give us an understanding of how our wild trout fishery functions that so far as I know, we've never had before. The beauty of this survey and especially the recruitment stuff is that for three years, over 12 important rivers like the Hauka and the Mitter and the Nariel Creek, we're going to have a really good understanding of the population dynamics of those streams. How well the fish recruit, how well they survive, that's a really important thing. And what are the things that influence all that? And also to give us anglers some sort of context to understand the good years and the not so good years that are an inevitable part of a wild fishery. We can't assume that it's always going to be flat and even. There are going to be peaks and troughs. But given those peaks and troughs, how can we best manage that fishery? And this, this research is really going to help us understand that.
The third project determines if fishing pressure is impacting trout populations and the quality of the fishery. Excessive harvest can reduce mature fish numbers and thus the production of juvenile fish. Some anglers think this is happening in key northeast rivers, so we'll be collecting catch and harvest information direct from anglers fishing there. This will quantify fishing pressure in terms of angler numbers, their level of expertise, catch and effort, and the number and size of trout actually taken from various stretches of river. Fisheries managers can then consider the situation with more information at hand and evaluate whether the current regulations are appropriate or need to be adjusted. The fourth project is a bit different. It's less about the fish and more about anglers and good communication, with an opportunity to talk through the results and gain a genuine understanding. To that end, each year, beginning in 2015, fisheries managers will host a public conference all about our trout fisheries. Everyone's invited, whatever your interest in our trout fisheries. This will provide a great opportunity to also hear from world experts on trout fishing, as well as fisheries management and science. We'll provide more detail on the conference in the months ahead. The fifth project also involves anglers. We want to use catch records from angling clubs and competitions as an indicator of fishery performance. It's worked well in our southwest Crater Lakes for monitoring trout and salmon fisheries, and we think it's well suited to help understand our wild trout fisheries. As this angler catch data increases, it will allow us to track the performance of the fishery from one year to the next. Project number six focuses on Lake Eildon and its inflowing rivers. We want to understand the contribution that lake fish make to these rivers. Are the movements just seasonal at spawning time, or do some fish move up into the rivers and stay there? Do some even become river residents, not returning to the lake at all? Lake Eildon is a huge expanse of water. Its depths provide year-round cold water refuge for trout, a very small proportion of which are stocked. If our rivers are getting too warm in summer, then maybe trout that once navigated upstream are just no longer doing it. To better understand this, we will look for unique signatures on the ear bones of trout to understand where they were born. The seventh project will consider bankside vegetation and the impact it has on water temperatures. Shaded riverbanks keep water colder for longer and buffer rivers from daily temperature spikes which affect trout directly and indirectly. Bankside vegetation also holds soil together in high flows and filters runoff after bushfires and heavy rain. The roots of large trees also provide important habitat and flow variation. We will work with catchment management authorities to understand what changes have occurred and what this might mean to the trout fishery. The eighth and final project will assess whether stocking can assist wild trout fisheries to recover. Stocking is a well-known tool to manage fisheries, but it's also widely misunderstood when it comes to river trout fisheries in Victoria. Research in Australia and overseas suggests that stocking trout into rivers that already contain wild trout populations doesn't actually improve the fishing in the long term. The extra fish just compete with those already there. And if those already there are stressed or depressed in numbers because of high water temperatures, then adding more fish isn't a great investment. Additionally, anglers have told us they prefer to maintain the wild trout populations than create put-and-take type fisheries. Having said that, a once-off stocking may help accelerate recovery of breeding stock after natural disasters such as floods or fire. Wild trout will recolonise a stream over time, but stocking could, in some cases, speed up the process. 
That's why we are undertaking two stocking trials, one in the upper Goulburn River above Lake Eildon and another in the Hauqua River. Each river will receive 5,000 one-year-old brown trout this year and more in years two and three. All fish will be fin clipped to distinguish them from wild fish. After all, monitoring their contribution to the fishery depends on being able to tell them apart. Volunteers from Mansfield Fishing Clubs help clip the trout at Snobs Creek. By removing their adipose fin, they can be identified by anglers and by fisheries researchers. Mansfield and District Fly Fishers have been very happy to be able to take a proactive role in assisting Fisheries Victoria in uh, responses that they've, uh, they're putting in place. There's been an obvious deterioration in our fishery and uh, that's led to the formation of the Trout Reference Group and uh, that Trout Reference Group has put forward a series of initiatives and obviously it's going to take a little while because there's no silver bullet here and uh, we're fairly confident that we're heading in the right direction. That's a lengthy explanation of the Wild Trout Fisheries Management Program, but an appropriate one given the size of investment by anglers and by the government. Project by project, we're committed to keeping anglers up to speed with our findings. We'll update web pages, post progress reports on our Facebook page, and look forward to seeing plenty of anglers at the annual conferences.